Hey everyone, so today we're going to do something really interesting. Today we're going to actually calculate portfolio variance. And so just like in our last video, we're pulling our data from Quando. Today we're going to be looking at two tickers or two assets today, Apple and Nike. And finally, we've, we've already created a covariance matrix between our Apple and Nike assets. And just like we did in our last video. So now let's try to understand portfolio variance. So what is portfolio variance? Well, it's quite intuitive. And, and you may think that how hard is it to calculate portfolio variance? All you need to do is you add up the variance of Apple, for example, and the variance of Nike. There you go. Well, you'd be misled. What we need to do is not just only look at the variances of each of the assets. We need to look at the covariance between them. And that's why we try to build out that covariance matrix in the last video. So we're actually going to use this covariance matrix in helping us calculate total portfolio variance. So let's dive into this formula real quick. So all this is really doing, and it's it's not that hard to understand. All we're looking at is we're looking at our weight. For example, this first term, we're taking the weight of the apple multiplied by the weighting of apple multiplied by the covariance between itself. And remember, the covariance between two types of assets of the same asset is just a variance, right? Then we move on to the second term. What is the second term doing? We're taking the weighting of night of apple, for example, multiplied by the weighting of Nike multiplied by the covariance between Apple and Nike. Finally, this third term, or this third term here, is just looking at the weighting of Nike times the weighting of Nike times the covariance of itself, which is just a variance. Finally, the weighting of Nike multiplied by the weighting of Apple times the covariance between each of them is just that. And that is portfolio variance. So if we simplify that, we can simplify it like so. And finally, if we just take the square root, we'll find that we have the portfolio standard deviation or volatility. So there it is. So let's see if we can calculate this. So all we got to do, first we're going to do is we're going to put some weights in here. So we're going to say Apple. We're going to assume our Apple weight is 75%. And we're just going to assume our Nike weight for our portfolio. We're weighting it in our portfolio of about 25%. So we have that. There we go. Now we can work with our covariance matrix. So we're going to say our covariance matrix. And what we're going to do is we're going to multiply it by these weights. But we're going to add something here. We're going to say axis equals zero. And what does that mean? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take these weights and we're going to multiply it along our covariance matrix down the index. So we're going to say 0.75 times 0.000720. Then we're going to take 0.25 and move down the index and say point, multiply it by 0 0.000131. Then we'll move on to Nike and we'll do the same thing. 0 0.75 times 0 0.000131, 0 0.25 times 0 0.000358. So we're moving down the index. So that's that and we'll run that for that. And now what we need to do is we need to multiply it again. For Instead of moving down the index, we're going to move across on axis equals one, which across the column, along the column now. So we're actually going to take 0.75 multiplied by 0.000540 and 0.25 times 0.000099. So we'll run that. And what you'll find here is we actually have all the terms in our portfolio variance now. Um, we just need to add them up. I also want to note though, if you'll, you'll notice that each of these terms are positive. If we get the lower these values, when we add this up, the lower our total portfolio variance. The higher any of these values, the higher our total portfolio variance. So just keep that in mind. So what in the future, we're going to be looking at how when you add greater or, or smaller covariance um, securities, you can increase or decrease the total portfolio variance. So without further ado, let's just add these up. So we're just going to say we're going to add up all these terms. So that sum, we're going to sum across, and then we're going to sum vertically. So that's um, critically. And there we go. We have our total portfolio variance for these assets given these weights. And to calculate standard, standard deviation, all we need to do is we're just going to say, and you know, first we're going to call this PVAR for portfolio variance. And I'm going to just output that here like so. And we're going to use NumPy. And we're just going to say square root of our portfolio variance. And we're going to call that portfolio standard deviation. And there's our portfolio standard deviation. And remember, that's um, that's on a daily measure. We want to annualize that. So to do that, we can call this annual portfolio standard deviation. And that's just equal to our portfolio standard deviation times MP dot the square root of 250. And if you remember, that's just for 250 trading days in a year. And there's our portfolio standard deviation. We've calculated it. 
So if you like this video, please subscribe. In our next videos, we're going to look at how portfolio variance and portfolio standard deviation can be used in understanding the efficient frontier and eventually building out an optimal portfolio. So till next time, thank you.